when teachers hear stuff like that, it's still gay. They just completely ignore it. Or if they hear like Faye yell down the hall, they completely ignore it. Like people, when they walk in the hall, they end up pushing people all the time. And if they find out you're gay or whatever, they end up pushing you and like beating you up and stuff like that. A safe space, like I don't have to worry about being harassed or being like bullied or anything like that. Feeling that you're, you're not going to be beaten up, <laughs> that you're going to be physically safe, um, that you're not going to be verbally abused, that you have a right to walk down the hallway and not have nasty things yelled at you. A safe space is somewhere where you can be who you want to be without having to deal with someone bullying you. Where I can walk in with my purse, I can walk in with my sunglasses, I can walk in with high heels if I choose to, and the teachers and the students will not say a thing. Somewhere that you can be free to be yourself. Well, it can be defined by the physical space itself in terms of does it appear welcoming? It could be about posters on the wall. They're not going to be like, oh, it's the gay kid, it's the gay kid. In the school, like, if you're dealing, if you're being bullied and stuff all day long, like, to know that you have that one class with that one teacher. I think it's just knowing that something's there. Someone, uh, like, just a teacher or anybody that you can just go talk to. The kind of place where you know you can simply be who you are and that a place sometimes to take refuge and sometimes to give refuge. A safe space is somewhere where you feel comfortable and secure and no one's going to judge you, which for me would be okay to be me. The library. Either the library, library or the GSA room. The GSA room. A safe space is what I'd like to think my school is. You know what? I think school should be a safe space. I don't think that should be I don't think that should be a definition that should be inside the school. There is this room that's safe. I think the whole school should be safe. I don't think it I don't think it even should be necessary to even have a safe space. Seriously. You just don't get shot down for it. You don't get depressed over it. You don't get in trouble for it. It's your personal opinion. You need to get that out because some people bottle it up and then people will explode, potentially hurt themselves. For a lot of students, coming out to their parents is the thing they're most afraid of. And if they can approach someone here first and get that uh, sort of support and know that they're uh, valued, then maybe they can take it that step further. It's just really comforting to know that like, you don't have to have your guard up, you don't have to be like, oh, what's he thinking, like, what's she thinking, like, uh. It's just nice to have a space where you can just go be yourself and not worry about it. When I was in school, there was nothing like this. So you, you, you just went along thinking, okay, I'm different. I don't understand it. I can't talk to anybody about it. And so, you know, in my case, so I'm going to pretend it's not happening. And I'm going to go along like, like everybody else and, you know, eventually try and figure out why I'm not happy. Particularly, I think it's important for LGBT kids uh, to have a safe space because they often don't have safe spaces elsewhere. So they may not have a safe space at home. Um, they might not have a safe space in the hallway. Um, and so your classroom might be the only part of their day that they have a safe spot to be. And so that's why it's so critical. There's a fairly high level of anxiety that comes with any of those disclosures. And having that type of space where someone can, re can relate, someone to go to, someone to support, uh, is really, really important. It gives them a chance to start speaking up. It gives them the chance, first of all, to acknowledge that they have some questions in a safe environment. If we don't provide that safe environment, whatever the situation is, no one is going to step up and say, you know, can you help me? So we have, to, we have to remove those barriers and we have to be accepting, we have to be inviting uh, in order to have that open dialogue. So a student who uh, is in a building where they feel welcome and they feel safe, where they feel accepted, where they're respected by their peers and their teachers and the community around them, we know uh, is a student who's better able to learn. And that's a huge part of what we try to do is ensure that we have an environment where students can do their absolute best. Schools are where most of our kids and most of our staff spend most of their time. So it's important that they feel welcome, that they feel included, that they see themselves and the adults that are present in the environment, and that they feel that they belong. So I think it's absolutely essential that our schools are safe spaces for everyone. Support from 
anybody really, especially people that are close to you. And people listening to you when you talk. Even if you don't use it, like the GSA, even if you don't go to it, even if you don't attend the meetings, just the fact that it's there does help because you realize that there are people who feel passionately about the subject and you know that you're not the only one. I think we address the issues head on. We address them in, in a way that's non-threatening, that's respectful of, of uh, people's attitudes, their values, their biases, perhaps their religiosity, but don't back down ever. Socially, not just being told that it's a good place or not just having a poster on the wall that says, you know, this is a welcoming place, but feeling it and seeing it in your peers. I try to make my office a safe space by displaying, you know, rainbows or posters that suggest that I'm inclusive, not just to gay and bisexual kids, but also to, to everyone, right? But I think more importantly than the physical space itself are the people that are in that space. And so that means that when you walk in the room, is there someone there that's willing to smile at you? even acknowledge you, give you eye contact? Are you able to express opinion without being attacked for that opinion? Um, do you feel comfortable in speaking at all, quite frankly? There's these little stickers um, that have like a triangle on it, the gay um, pride flag on it, and it basically describes right on the sticker what a safe space is. Um, I took a few of those stickers and I went up to a few of my teachers and every room that I've been in in WCI Somewhere in the room has one of these stickers and that's where I can honestly, I let the teacher know for me to be in this classroom, I need it to be safe. I want you to respect that. I would appreciate it if you respect that. You get all types of students I find coming into the library, you know, like all hairstyles, all piercings, tattoos, it doesn't matter. You, you want that feeling too, that everyone's accepted. And even if it's not a librarian's own comfort level, you still have to reach out in any area that you're supporting and make the resources accessible. So I, you put them right on the shelf with everything else. If you're doing displays, whether they're in the major display in the hallway or here in the library, to make it so it's available. And it, the more students see these titles and the resources, the more it becomes accepted. This church, Parkminster United, has worked really hard to be inclusive and it has been a really long process. It isn't something that happened overnight. There were years of discussion there was open forums, uh, there was anger. I think one of our turning points was having real people come and tell their story and hear how the church has been hurtful, hear how the church has been supportive, hear how we can work together. And since then have what we call an inclusive ministry committee. And that works as a committee that is inclusive to all people. And part of that is we welcome everybody regardless of sexual orientation. This is not a topic, that's a standalone. It should be integrated in, in everyday curriculum, in everyday language, in everyday talk and actions. Like I don't think it should be like, okay, 15 minutes out of every lesson plan is, that's so not gay time. Like It's not a one-off, it's not a workshop, it's not a um, anti-homophobia day. No, it should be, it should become normalized and that's what I try to do um, in my courses. The teacher's teaching history was actually gay positive so she put some of the gay history into it. It's not like oh it's like far out there wasn't even part of it, it was actually in the history. It's not enough to say you know you're not allowed to say this without giving it any kind of context. I think it's necessary that we actually teach kids about human rights and that we teach kids about diversity. And I think it's really important that we embed it in the curriculum. That the support for the LGBTQ community is integrated into the system, not just respected on the side, integrated into it. The teachers need the knowledge, they need to be trained on it. Again, I think it comes down to educating because when, when I know the teachers don't get it, that means my children aren't safe. All of us, especially people in authority, around young people, we have to change the way we use language. Adopt language that is natural and constant and just make low level change. Uh, it actually, I think, is gonna have a greater effect and it's in fact easier to do, right? Who wants to get preachy? The benefit of having a safe space is that everybody in the environment, you know, can learn. Share your own experiences about being able to reflect your experiences in things like your writing and your reading. Everybody needs to see themselves reflected to some extent or in some way in order to feel like 
what they're, what they're learning, what they're doing is relevant. We really have to take a look at things like our hiring practices. Even once we get people into our organization that reflect different groups, how do we make them feel like they belong, like they have a voice in the organization? Because it's just, it's not good enough just to put them there. They have to feel like their attitudes and their opinions and their thoughts actually are counted in the organization. Then there's the bigger picture in schools, I think, though, that has to do with policy and shifting and changing policy so that school environments are safe, so that, that this doesn't become an issue where a teacher or a principal makes a decision of will I intervene here, right, based on their attitudes, their personal attitudes towards homosexuality but in, or, or, or to, to transgender people, but instead they're put in a position of having no choice but to intervene because that child has a right to a safe education and that policy and the way in which we implement policy has to guarantee that right to a safe education. And little by little those, those little pieces they add up and, and it works and it becomes a whole school community idea. Just create a school culture of acceptance. I mean if you accept everybody then not accepting one person will be unacceptable.